Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to be focusing on rhythm. I always get a lot of questions from people, and I have through the years, about rhythm playing. And the one common theme is how do you make your rhythm playing more interesting? A lot of us get stuck playing chords down in first position, and we're not really sure where to go after that. So this lesson is all about taking a rock blues jam track. It's actually a very stripped down jam track. It's just bass and drums. And you're going to be filling in all the rhythm stuff. And this spills into lead territory a little bit as well. But a lot of it is rhythm and rhythm fill licks and I'm gonna break down how to play that note for note everything that I play in the intro and how to tie it back to stuff that you already know chord shapes that you know and some real basic scales and things like that so I've got the lesson split into two parts in this video we're gonna take a look at the first half if you'd like to download the tablature and get the part 2 video and the mp3 jam track which I have in multiple tempos so I have a slower version of this as well you can get all of those things by going to activemelody.com go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP 286. Alright, so if you haven't subscribed to the Active Melody YouTube channel yet, make sure you do that. I put out new lessons like this each week and it's a great way to stay informed. So when you click the subscribe button, also make sure you click that little alert bell so that you can be notified in real time as I put out new lessons. Alright, so let's talk about this song. Actually, before we get into the song, I just want to mention this up front. Don't just think about memorizing this, uh, this lead part and then being done with it. You want to think about each of these little licks as components that we're going to learn, or think of them as words that you're going to in, uh, incorporate into your vocabulary so that you can start to use them when you communicate or when you improvise. That's really what the goal of this lesson and all of these lessons is, so that you can become a better player. It's just to give you ideas. And so don't just think about them in the key that we're playing them in. Think about how you would use them in different keys or even with different jam tracks. How would you take just take one little component, you don't have to take the whole solo, and start figuring out how you can piece that in. How you can connect it back to a chord shape that you already know, or something that you already know. And that's how you're going to really start to grow as a guitar player. Um, Alright, so let's talk about this song. Um, if you're a premium member, you'll have access to the tablature and the, the jam track, which obviously the jam track will be the ultimate goal because it'll help with your timing and filling in. But we're going to go through this without the jam track as we break it all down. Uh, but I will explain where everything comes from. So we're going to start off by, let's well, let's mention the key that the song is in. It's in the key of A, and it starts off by going from the A chord to the E, and then back to the A. So it goes like this. And that's the first thing we're going to learn. Now that's kind of rock blues rhythm 101. You hear that in just about everything. And you can hear it with a shuffle. And you'll hear it, you know, played straight the way that we're playing it in this lesson. Uh, lots of different ways. Now, I always attribute this to Chuck Berry. I always think about his, you know, he would play it up here with his pinky, but it's the same concept. And so that's what we're going to uh, start off by playing. And so what I'm going to do to play that for, over that A chord is I'm going to bar the first four strings here on the second fret. Now, some of you will already know how to do this, so I'll be kind of brief on this. Um, but if you don't know how to do this, uh, you're gonna, you'll pick this up pretty quickly. So we're going to be playing on strings five and four. So the fifth string is the open A. And then the fourth string is behind the second fret there. These are all going to be downstrokes of the right hand to start with. So we're going to go five and four, and then just the fifth string. Now the other thing I'll mention is I'm using this part of my hand to rest on the bridge back here, or on the strings back here, close to the bridge, so that you get that sound instead of... You don't want the strings to ring out. You want to have control over them. So rest your hand on the strings. And you might have to move your hand around to find what's comfortable for you, but I like to be right pretty close to the to the bridge back here. All right, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Play strings five and four, and then the fifth string by itself. And then every other time, we're going to play the fourth fret, fourth string. Now, I use my pinky for that. Some of you will use your ring finger. Either of those fingers will work, but you're alternating that, using it every other time. So here's how it sounds slowly. So you can see every other one, I'm just playing the fifth string by itself, but then I'm also alternating between that second and the fourth fret. So if you're new to this, just take that little piece, don't do anything else, and play it as slow as you want, but just try and get the palm muting and get that down to some sort of a, a timing that sort of stays together, something cohesive. All right, so once you get that, going to take that same thing and play that over the E chord. So we're just going to move our fingers up a set of strings. So now we're going to be playing the open sixth string and then the fifth 
string on the second, behind the second fret there. You can just take your finger that you were barring on the second fret and just move it up one. So we're gonna do that over the E chord, same thing, and then back up to the A again. All right, so let's practice that. From the beginning then, we have one, two, three, four. Now at the end of that, we're, I'm gonna show you this really cool lick, and uh, this will be a big takeaway because you can use this lick when you play, playing lead, playing rhythm. There's this little box that you can play out of here when you're playing an A. But we're gonna do, at the end of that lick, we're gonna do an upstroke on the third string. So it goes like this. So you can hear it right at the end of that. One, two, three, four. It'd be on the and there uh, after four. So it's what we're gonna play there is we're gonna go. So it's up, up, two up strokes on the third string. And then we're gonna play the fourth fret, fourth string, back to the second fret, fourth string. So we have. And then we're gonna repeat that. So it's up, up, down, up. And then when you play that second fret fourth string, you're gonna make your put your bar down so that you can hit the second fret third string. So you have. All right, let me do that slowly. Just watch my right hand. Okay, now that lick is seems simple. It's just three notes, but you can do so much with that over A. You can put those notes in any order. You can bend them. You can really start to. Start, you can play them together, you can start to do all kinds of cool stuff. So I use that area all the time and it's easy to do because your hand is already there. You've already got the bar down. Now as a sidebar, think about how you could do this now in another key using that same thing. So if that's your A, we can use that A chord shape out of Caged. Let's move it up here to, to D. So there's your bar, just like we had down there. So you can start to use that now in other, other places. Now obviously this first part's not gonna work because you had that open string, but everything that wasn't open, you can shift now and play in any key. All right, from the beginning. A, E, A. Now after that, we're gonna go back uh, down to the fourth fret and to the second fret again on the fourth string. I'm gonna play this. Now that's kind of a bluegrass lick, sort of. It's kind of a, a version of that. But we're gonna keep that bar there and I'm gonna put my middle finger down on the third fret, fifth string. And then I'm gonna put my ring finger down on the fourth fret, fifth string. There's the second fret, fourth string. Fourth fret, fourth string. And then back to that third fret, uh, or sorry, second fret, third string. So you have. Now that's another huge takeaway. Don't just just analyze what you've just got there out of the A chord. You can hear that in like uh, what is that uh, cheap trick? Mama don't dance and your daddy don't rock and roll. I mean th th those kinds of songs. That's coming out of that same thing that we're learning there. You can also hear that in just about every turnaround in any bluegrass song that's used quite a bit. Obviously, they, they do that more in the key of G, but same concept. Um, okay, from the beginning. All right, sounds start to start to make sense. And you can see how this these licks there work really nicely over A. So now you've got all these notes that you can play with between the second fret and the fourth fret. It's a little box there. And when you're playing rhythm in A, start to use these. Even if it's just that. It's like a bass run. It's like what a bass player would do. Okay, so once we end there on that second fret, third string, then I played. So this is getting us from the A back to the E. Little country lick. So I'm gonna do a half bend 
and release here on the 4th fret, 3rd string. So again, it's still in that same box between the 2nd fret and the 4th fret. Now we're on the 4th fret, 3rd string. So it's the bend and release 4th fret down to the 2nd fret on the 3rd string. And now we're going to go 4, 2 again, but this time on the 4th fourth, fourth string. And then once we come down to here, I'm going to come down to the 3rd fret on the 6th string with my middle finger. And then I'm going to play that E power chord, which is the open 6th string and the 5th string, which is, you know, the, the E chord that we've already done. So, that's a really cool way to get from the A to the E. So remember that too, if you're playing a blues which has an A and an E in it, which is going to happen, right, at some point. Now it sounds a little more country, but you can make that work in rock or blues or anything. You don't have to think about genres. I like to just take that stuff completely out of it. Uh, even though I describe the lessons as country or jazz or blues, I do that just for search engine reasons. Obviously, you have to, I want people to find the stuff, but when I'm playing, I don't think about, um, is this country, is it blues, what should I be doing? I just think about what feels right. All right, from the beginning, slowly. Get to, to that E, we're gonna play up, up. There's two up strokes on the fourth string behind the second fret. You can see I've got my bar there. Here it is slowly. Once I do that up, I'm gonna play the down stroke on the open six and then another up. Now I covered this in a lesson just a few weeks ago. It was a rock blues type rhythm and I showed this lick because I use it all the time. I'm not sure where I got this. But that's how I'm doing it. Now you can use that same technique over the A chord, right? Just as well, just like this. So remember that too. Um, all right, so. So then the song goes to an A chord and I ended up playing. So we're gonna learn that first. So it's a down, down. Those are, I'm playing both of those. And then a muted up and a muted down. So you have down, down, up, down, and then I've got another upstroke that I'm playing, and then another muted down, and another muted up after that. So let me put it all together, it'll make sense when you hear it. Let me do it again. Now this is what, right after that, the song, uh, you'll hear the bass goes into a kind of a different part. And I wanted to do something that was a little more interesting than just playing a 1-4-5, so I introduced um, actually, it is pretty much a 1-4-5. There's also this major 2 chord that's in there, though. So, uh, after that, I played an A7 chord, and I went... Just pick the notes out of the chord. Then I went to the D chord, which is your 4 chord. And then... I went to that major 2. Now, normally your 2 would be a minor, but I'm playing a major 2. Which is a B7 chord. So, let me show you what I'm doing there. So, when you when you first heard that, it... It might sound like it was really complicated, but all I'm doing is playing those three chords. It's just an A7. So I've got my ring finger and my middle finger on the second fret, strings two and four. And I start on the fourth string, and I played four, four, three, two, one, two, three. So then I go back. Four, three, two, one, two, three. And then I go to the D chord. It's actually a D sus two. So you can see I didn't include that 2nd fret um, first string. So think about a D chord, just take away your middle finger. And I'm playing 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. I just thought it sounded better for some reason to have that open E string in there. So from the A7, you have... And then the B7... So I'm just playing a B7 chord here, and I'm starting on the 5th string and playing 5, 4, 3, 2. Your 2 is your open B string. Alright, so that's a lot of information. Let me back up from the beginning now and play us up to that B7 chord. So here we go. And then it goes.
goes back to the A and I play it. Now that's pretty much the same thing we've already done, this, this first part of it. That's that down, down, muted up, muted down, upstroke, another muted down, and a muted up. I already covered that. But then the second time through I went... So that's kind of a Keith Richards, or a nod to Keith Richards, I guess. We're going to keep that bar there, and I'm going to hammer on uh, to a D chord. And the way that I'm playing that D chord is I'm just playing strings 4, 3, and 2. So that's um, my middle finger going down. I keep the bar on the 2nd fret. My middle finger goes down on the 3rd fret 2nd string. My ring finger goes down on the 4th fret 4th string. And then we play the chord obviously you go back to the A chord. So it's A, D, A. That's one, four, one. And you can remember that. I've covered this in a lot of lessons, but to easily go from that one to the four chord, you can see how to do that. Now that you, you should know this cage system or be learning the cage system, you now, now can play that with this A chord shape anywhere. So if I wanted to do that for a C chord, there's your C chord. C to my F, one to four, right? So that should, you know, a light bulb should go off for some of you to, to realize, oh, that's how easy it is to go from your one to your four chord with that shape. So from the A, we have. And then I played. Now that sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's very intuitive once you understand it. We're just playing two strings. We're playing strings two and three. So it's like a little two note chord, very easy to grab. And I'm starting here with my middle finger on the fifth fret second string and my ring finger on the sixth fret third string. And I'm playing down strokes with the right hand. But if what I'm thinking about, it's a harmonized third, um, but what I'm thinking about when I make this chord is I'm thinking about the A major bar chord. If I were to play that right here and play strings two and three, that's all I'm doing. I'm just grabbing two notes out of that chord. So I know that we're playing over the A chord now. So I'm just thinking about, uh, and you'll start to do this in your mind, the, the more you do this, uh, the more this will make sense and it become very intuitive and quick to do. But if you think about this A chord, you've got strings two and three. That's a harmonized third there. So now you got one up here. So now you can, you can connect those two by going. So think about that. That's huge right there. And it's easy to think about. It's easy to visualize. So now you can just take that shape and walk it down to this. So now you can take that and do that in any key. If I said to do that in E, you can do that, right? Now you can start to use that when you improvise, whether you're playing leads or rhythms, you've got all these little uh, harmonized uh, licks that you can start to work into your playing. Okay, so I started with... And I came from, from this position, this where my middle finger is on the 5th fret. I kept that same shape, but I slid it up to the 8th fret 2nd string. So that's another thing to remember. Um, and I got that from uh, Malted Milk, which was a Robert Johnson song. Eric Clapton did it on un Unplugged. And when he did that with, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Andy Fairweather Lowe. They, they were, the two of them were playing. But they did this together. Um, when they played that song. I don't remember what key they were doing it in, but I remember hearing that and it sounded very weird because you have this major thing and then you have that which sounds more bluesy. And that's what you're doing is you're going, if you visualize this, you're going into pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale for A. So if you think you're, you're A pattern one, it's right there. Pattern two would be up here. So you're playing those two notes out of pattern two. Well, it just happens to be the same shape. So you've got this. You can slide it up and then back. So you're touching bass, you're starting major, you're going into that minor thing, and then you're going back to major. It sounds really cool when you hear it uh, together like that. So... That's what I played. I slid into those two. So slide, then pick. Slide, then pick. So remember that.
that's where we walk it back down to that first um, A that I showed you, just playing strings two and three. So we're just going to walk that shape down where your middle finger goes from the fifth fret to the fourth fret to the third fret. And, and again, I'm sliding and then picking. Slide, pick, slide, pick. That's a really commonly used technique in the blues. And it, it saves you from having a double pick that. And it makes it pretty easy to do once you get the two hands kind of working together. So, from there, we're going to come down and bar the first two strings, I'm sorry, first three strings on the second fret, playing only strings two and three. And then we're going to go back to the fourth fret, fourth string, back to the second fret, fourth string. There's that little box. And then once I play that second fret, fourth string, I'm going to come back up and play strings two and three on the second fret, because I've already got the bar there. And that is an A chord. So hopefully you can see how, wow, this is all connected back to these basic chord shapes. It's really two chord shapes that you have to think about, and then everything else kind of is just connective tissue between those two chords. So that's how that goes. So it repeats itself. there was just strings two and three on that second fret. And then it went back to that Keith Richards lick and went and that sounds more like something from a KISS song. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know where this came from but and so you're going four one four one four one four one those are the chord numbers or D A D A D A D A and it's that same thing I just showed you. And I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up with the right hand. Oh, there is a muted down and a muted up. And you'll see that in the tablature there. So it's down, up, down, up, muted down, muted up. And then we do it again. And that's just sort of like a, that's a good way to, uh, f to fill the space when you're playing rhythm, especially in a rock scenario like this. I use that all the time, that one to the four chord thing. So if I'm playing in C, you know. Right, you've got that. Now you've also, huge takeaway right here. So pay attention to this. So you've got that, right? And then if, instead of playing this, if your middle finger stayed where it did, but your ring finger jumps up a string instead, so that it sounds like this. Now I'm in the key of C right here. But look at this. That's that same little thing I just showed you. So we take our C chord up here. See how that's connected all right here together. So now you've got... can start to do all of that while you improvise. It's pretty easy to do once you can see that. And you can see how it connects back to that A shape. Again, this is why that cage system is so important to understand uh, just a few chords. It's not like there's it's overwhelming information, but you can do so much with that, uh, knowing those five chord shapes in different spots. Even if you just know three of them, I mean, that you're still, you could still do a lot. All right, let's back it up um, from the beginning. There's one other little part I'm going to include in this video, and then we'll see you in part two to go over the rest of this. So from the start, we have... information already. Now we're going to play So that's going from the A chord to the 5 chord, the 1 chord to the 5 chord. Now this
this is another big, big takeaway. A lot of takeaways in this. Um, because it's so useful when you're playing rhythm. But I'm barring the first two strings here on the fifth fret. Down strokes. Then I, I keep that bar there. My ring finger goes down now on the seventh fret second string. And then it slides up to the eighth fret second string. Back. Now, what is that? Some of you are saying, what is that? Well, all you have to do is think about your chord shape, your uh, A bar chord. This is the E chord shape out of cage. But look at that. It's just the top two notes out of that chord. So now you should, and plus this is an A note on the first string, so you should be able to go, wait a minute, that's pretty easy. If I want to use that lick now in anything, if I want to use that in G. So let's keep going with the rest of this lick. So we have. Let's get that. So this is just walking right down basically pattern one of that minor pentatonic scale, but it's also just walking down this chord shape. So we're going to now bar the first three strings on the seventh fret. We're only going to play strings two and three. And then we're going to come back to the fifth fret, strings two and three, and do a quick hammer on to the sixth fret, third string. Ring finger goes down on the uh, seventh fret, fourth string. And all you can see, you can see all I've done is if I just left my fingers down, I'm playing the A chord. I'm just playing the top four strings out of that bar chord. So we have. And then we're going to play the 5th fret 4th string. And then we're going to resolve there on the 7th fret 5th string. And when I play that note, I'm going to hit the low E string because we're now playing over the E chord. Um, okay, so that's, a, that's the big takeaway there is this lick. And you can use that now over anything. Let's do it in B. So see how that works, how, how these little components, and that's what I said at the beginning, these little components are the value, in my opinion. I mean, the, the, the piece altogether is valuable in trying to get your timing and trying to understand how to play something, but it's taking these components and then if you take, even if you just get one of them out of the entire lesson, but all of a sudden it becomes something you got and you can use, that's huge. You've now just grown by, you know, whatever that amount is. You just want to keep growing and keep learning. And it never ends. That's the thing. Like, as long as I've been doing this, I'm always learning. And you always will. The, the moment you become stagnant, it, it's no fun anyway. Uh, or you, you never reach the top of the hill. You just keep going. And that's the fun part. Okay, so let's back up now. That's where we're going to end part one. I'll see you in part two, and we'll go over the rest of this. We'll get... Um, uh, the other half, and then obviously as a premium member you get the tablature and then the jam track, which I have in two tempos. I have a slower version of this as well, so you can practice and work your way up to playing through. Here we go, from the beginning.